can be only one podcast, and may it be the Prince of the Universe. Hi, folks, I'm Matt. Bruce is not here. By the way, I, I advertised early this month <coughs> that Wes and I were going to do a podcast on Before the Boom, uh, wrestling, 70s, late 70s, early 80s, and everyone's going, hey, where is that podcast? Where is that podcast? We're trying to get Mikey involved, and we can't find him. He won't respond to my text. Mikey does this every once in a while. He kind of disappears. Um, he's all right. I'm sure he's all right, but he won't respond to me or Wes. I don't really know that much about wrestling from that time, let alone the boom times, too. I was I was a Fairweather fan. I, I came around when it was popular and then left, you know, <clears throat> and don't keep up with it. I'd like to, but I just, I'm just i just not going to make the time anymore. I know I won't. Uh, and so we're still waiting for Mikey to get together or if I can find someone else to kind of sit in because I really can't do it. Bruce thinks he may be able to help a little bit, but not that much. Um, and then Bruce and I may, well, we will come back. Bruce probably will be back here next week to do uh, another review of something else. But this was a review <coughs> that um, I wanted to have with Wes or uh, um, uh, Bruce because we were supposed to go see Return of the Jedi. Now, Return of the Jedi was not playing in theaters here, not playing in Monroe. And uh, I, yeah, I was bummed about that, and we weren't even playing anywhere near us either. Well, then eventually it popped up, Shreveport, hour and a half away from me. I was like, yeah, done. I'm going. I'm going. But the only time I could go was on a Sunday. Uh, couldn't go Friday because uh, Friday night we were setting up. We were getting ready for – we had tons of birthday parties to attend, but we were also trying to set up for our girls' birthday party because they had their fourth birthday party. And Saturday, I couldn't do it because I was hopping from one birthday to the next. And then that afternoon, evening, we had our birthday party. So, And then, of course, there was cleanup later on that night. I knew there was no way I could get out in time. And I really wanted to go that weekend. But it was only planned that one weekend. So then looking at the schedule, I found out I could go late, late Sunday night, which I didn't want to do because I was going to get two in the morning coming home, <coughs> or go Monday night which again, I could not do. Um, at the time I was doing dinner theater practice. So leaving, I was thought about even taking a half day off, driving out there, watching the movie, coming back, but then quickly realizing that there was no way I could do that and make it back in time for practice, our first practice. And then I said, well, maybe go after practice, but we were going to get out too late. I didn't want to, I, I could have cut it short. Now that I know I could have cut it short and gone earlier. Um, uh, well, no, gone super late. But at the time, I thought, well, what if we go the full time? You know, I, I don't want to just be rushing them out the door just so I can go see a movie. So really, Sunday night was the only night I could do it. Now, Wes, at the same point, uh, he had something going on that night, and he couldn't go. And Bruce, I asked him if he could go, but he was working too. So neither one of them can watch it with me. Now, if you recall, a few years back, Wes and I went to go see Empire Strikes Back. It was Wes's idea. It was playing in theaters. I kind of wanted to see it, but didn't know who I could ask because Bruce was working 80 hours a week back then. And Wes goes, hey, I'll go. And we went. We had a good time. We talked about it. I think we did a podcast on it. I wanted to do the same thing with Return of the Jedi. Unfortunately, neither one of them could come watch it with me. Now, don't worry about me because my nephew, my oldest nephew, I was kidding with him Sunday night. And I said, hey, what are your plans tonight? He went, nothing was up. I said, you want to go see a movie? He's like, sure. What movie? I said, Return of the Jedi. He said, is it playing here? I said, no, it's playing in Shreveport at 945. And so we'll go out there, watch it. We'll get done about 12, 12, 15. And then we'll drive all the way back and get home around two in the morning. So you ready? And he said, yes. <laughs> and I thought he was kidding at first. I said, are you serious? He went, yeah. Because supposedly this is his favorite movie, Star Wars movie. And he wanted to see it in theaters too. And he was really big on that. So I did not know this. I was super happy because I did not want to drive all the way back because I'll be honest. I was dying. I was so tired. I didn't get to take a nap. I wake up early and take care of the kids on Saturdays and Sundays because um, my wife wants to uh, sleep in. So I, I, I was going to have to, you know, drive all the way back. And I did not look forward to that. But having someone with me would have been better and probably safer. And I was really worn out. I mean, I drank like two energy drinks back to back and I only do one and I usually granny sit that one all day long. <clears throat> if I have an energy drink at 10, I don't finish it till around three that afternoon. <clears throat> I mean, it's seriously about four hours of me just granny sipping it. Why? I have no idea why I do that, but I do that to this day 
I just cannot down those drinks anymore. I take one, but I just sip it, sip it, sip it a little bit every, every year. You're like, doesn't it go flat after a while? I guess, but that's just what I've always done because I just can't down those things anymore. Well, why do why did I just stop drinking them, Matt? I don't know. That They're tasty. <laughs> Maybe I'm addicted to the caffeine. I don't know. But I just granny sip it all day. So drinking two back to back was hard for me, but I knew I had to do it to stay awake. But I just felt worn out by the time I came home. Either way, though, totally worth it. Totally worth it. Um, talk about Return of the Jedi. Then I want to talk about a few other things here. But <clears throat> Return of the Jedi is probably my favorite movie out of them all. I love Empire Strikes Back. I think it's great, but I just have so many good memories as a kid watching Return of the Jedi, look watching the Ewoks. You know, I, I just vividly remember seeing this three times in theaters when I was six years old, twice with my dad, once with my grandmother. Absolutely had a blast. Loved every minute of it. Loved every second of it. And really, 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 really. Uh, those memories transcended all the way up to 1997 when I'd watch these again. I'd watch these, uh, let me see, but just to kind of give you a, an overall here, I have seen, I think, these movies every time they've hit theaters. Yes, even the first time it hit theaters. My mom and dad went to go see Star Wars. They couldn't afford a babysitter because we were very broke poor growing up. And so what they did is they brought me to the theater. My mom, I don't remember this, my mom said that, I stayed awake the whole time and looked at the screen. She kept thinking I was asleep, but I never was. And then after that, she said, oh, you know what? He must be a star. I mean, th she says that now, but that's because she knows I like Star Wars now. So that could be mom just telling a story there. But either way, supposedly I had sat there and quiet and watched the whole thing. And she was impressed. And I didn't even sleep either. So obviously I liked it. Now, the second time they took us, I was three. And it, children were still free, three and under. They couldn't afford babysitters, so they both went. Um, mom did not like to, she thought it was too dark and she refused to go see any more thinking that they were going to be dark now. Um, but I, I want to say, I remembered this. Can you have a memory when you're three? I have some memories when I'm like four or five. I definitely have some memories there. I don't know if I, I, I remember going to a movie theater. I remember grabbing the movie seat in front of me and standing up and being able to grab the movie seat in front of me and watching something on a screen. What I used to tell people it was Empire, like the opening Hoth scene, and I was scared of the four-legged walkers. Maybe, but as I get older, I'm thinking, well, am I just imagining that because I want to have a memory of Empire Strikes Back? Or did it really happen? I don't really know. I'm being, I'm being brutally honest. I know I went, but I also know I don't know if I, if I remember it. But like I said earlier, I definitely remember Return of the Jedi and seeing it three times and loving it each time. Uh, the, uh, when Darth Vader's mask comes off, it used to scare me the way that Darth Vader looked all scarred and, you know, old and just decrepit. I, oh, it just freaked me out. <clears throat> the second time I saw it with my grandmother, I, I walked out of the theater. I told her I had to go to the bathroom. I didn't, I just didn't want to see the scene. And then the third time I was like, no, this is star Wars. I need to face my fear and watch it. So I did. Um, but I remember it scared me too as a little kid. And uh, when it came back in 1997, I saw these with Bruce. And I think Bruce and I have talked about these. Those are some great memories in 1997 when it came back. Um, a New Hope. I went down to Bat. He was living in Baton Rouge at the time. I went down to see it. I was super excited. Uh, I remember I was reading Galaxy of Fear uh, number two, I think, about the plant, the Manning planet. We sat in line because back then Ticketmaster or getting online tickets didn't exist back then. Ticketmaster did, but getting online tickets for a movie was unheard of. She so had to wait in line when the box office was open to buy the tickets. And so we sat there in the line. We weren't, we got there like four or five in the morning, somewhere, somewhere between four and five. And we went ahead and walked it. We saw a few people and everyone was in their cars because it was cold. And then when some people started walking out to get in line, we just ran for it to get in line. Then everyone started coming out of their car, and we just sat there in the cold. But I read Galaxy of Fear. And I remember I read the entire book, and, uh, and and then when I finally finished it, we started moving. I was like, the line started moving. I was like, oh, great, because they'd open up the box office a little early to sell tickets. Um, but we got in there super early. And I wasn't reading in the car. I was reading a little bit in the car, but we were talking more. But when we got out there, no one wanted to talk. It was cold and miserable. Uh, I remember going down there to see Empire uh, in Baton Rouge again. And then for Jedi, for some reason, I couldn't go down. And I think Bruce came up and saw Return of the Jedi with me and, and Monroe here. 
And I remember we saw the old malls mall movie theater because the new one didn't exist back then. And I was so excited to see Return of the Jedi. And maybe Bruce had moved up here by then. I can't remember. Either way, though. Um, so I remember all three times in 97, sitting in line for ages on tickets. And just to get to see this again, 97 was a good year. Uh, especially for the Expanded Universe, too. A lot of good books and everything were coming out, too. Um, and then, of course, uh, the only thing I did not see was the re-release, the 3D re-release of Episode 1. I didn't go see it in 3D because I was totally against 3D and like the $11 price tag, which now tickets cost ten fifty dollars here. But back then, 11 bucks when a, when a movie ticket cost 7 I was like, no, screw that. And I didn't want to <clears throat> see it. So I didn't see Episode 1 3D. Now, if they would have brought all three out, Maybe eventually. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I, would have, I was going to see it, but they didn't have an announcement for two or three. But when the first one, Phantom Menace, came out, I did not see that one. Uh, for some reason, unless I missed it, Star Wars, the 40th anniversary, uh, you know, didn't come out in theaters back for its 40th anniversary. I don't recall it coming out in theaters in 2017 at all. And uh, if it did, I, I'd like I said, I totally missed it, but I don't think it did because <clears throat> I would have t- totally gone to see it. Um, Empire had every intention of going to see it, and then Wes caught me off guard by saying, yeah, I'm going too. So I was like, oh, well, I'd rather go with someone. I thought I was going by myself. And then uh, Jedi, of course I was going to go, but I wasn't going to travel more than you know two hours to go see it. And I did. Well, I mean, me and my nephew just felt like garbage afterwards going home, but we, we both agreed it was definitely worth it. <clears throat> Jedi <coughs> is shot well. It's uh, got great acting, great scenes. I, I, you, you know every line, but still, you enjoy it. You en- and I know Wes and I talked about this when we talked about watching Empire Strikes Back again. You just enjoyed it. The way it was shot, the way it, the pacing, everything about these movies. There's a reason these are just classic movies, and they're just so good. And I'm sorry to say this, but it, nothing will ever be better than the original trilogy. And there's a lot of younger fans out there go, well, Matt, come on. The prequels look better. Yeah, I don't think it had the quality acting. Or, or it had the quality storytelling that the original trilogy did. I think it's just so solid. And like things like, and I laughed. I laughed, even though I knew the jokes. I laughed at the jokes. And the best one was Yoda going, when 900 years you age, look as good, you will not. Mm. And, and he does that little nod at the end to say, yeah, stinger, zing. You know, Luke, eat that. And I just thought that was so smart. And there's so much in there that's just, just it's just oozing great storyline, great character development, uh, great acting, great moments, great pauses in the storyline. The cinematography is good. Everything about, I mean, Leia gets to reciprocate. She gets to say her, I know. You know, Han gets, says, I love you now. And she says, I know. It was such a cool line when Han said an empire, but I, we forget that they reversed the roles on that. And Leia got to say it. She got to confirm her love in a cool way for Han Solo. Han finally becomes, you know, a man who's ready to settle down, not be a a rogue, a vagabond. His story is finally completed. Luke finally gets the redemption for his father, you know, the ever optimistic Luke. Uh, Leia, who's been working and toiling so hard for this rebellion to uh, pay off, has finally won the biggest battle ever. And they're on the winning side now. Ah, it's just good. It's just good. Now, the thing is, I didn't get to say for the credits because I knew it was already 12.15. And I I wanted to, but I also wanted to get home at a decent hour. I did not. It was 2 in the morning. My son woke up just as I came in. So I fed him. I was up to like 2.30. Had to get up um, at 6 to get to work. So I, I got like a nap in there. Really didn't get any sleep. I was dog tired for the rest of the week. But totally worth it because Return of the Jedi, any any time, if they want to show all these movies again for their 50th anniversary, which they're probably going to do, um, or just re-release them for fun next year, I would watch them. Now, what if they re-released all of the prequel movies? (coughs) Would I go see them? Probably. Probably I would. Episodes 1, 2, and 3, let's say, I I don't know, what's the 20th anniversary? That's already happened, right? (coughs) So the 25th anniversary... <clears throat> would be next year for episode one. Would I watch episode one, 25 year anniversary? And then Attack of the Clones, 25 years. And then another three years. Say, maybe, maybe, possibly. I'd like it better if they just released them all back to back to back over, you know, January, February, where the 
box office isn't that big. I think theaters should do this because Star Wars fans would come out in droves, I think. Even for the prequels, I think they'd come out for that. Um, I wouldn't enjoy as much, say, the original trilogy come out again. However, yes, if the prequels came out, I would do it. Now, I don't know. Th- this may not even be humanly possible, but if movie theaters could somehow talk to Disney and say, hey, I want to show those Ewok movies, you know, for kids matinee or something, you know, <clears throat> and I'd pay you for it. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'd, in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. I'd be there for those two Ewok movies. Absolutely. Without a doubt. The two Ewok movies and me would I, I'd be so happy. I'd be so happy that that would make me more happy than any movie I've seen in the past 10 years. Um, I'd really love to see that. I don't think it would. I think the UK got a release of the first Ewok movie. I'm so jealous over that. But I would love to see those. I mean, if you talk about movies that never got to be shown on the big screen that I'd want to see, those two are in my top uh, top five. Top three, actually. Number one would have to be Tremors 2. <clears throat> I'd really want to see that in theaters. But the Ewok movies would be right in there. I'd love to see the Ewok movies on the screen, I would go. What about, because I know someone's going to ask me this in the comments, Dave Filoni's Clone Wars? That, that, that movie? No. That one can die. I would never watch that one again in theaters. I would never watch that one again. When I saw it with my wife way back in the day, I was depressed walking out of the theater. I thought it was an awful movie. I thought that was going to be the last movie we'd ever see in theaters because, you know, George Lucas said he was done. I was like, well, that is embarrassing. I said, they can't get any worse than that. But I was wrong. Well, at least I heard I was wrong. Anyway, um, so I would not go see a Clone Wars one. And then I'm trying to think of what else is there. Like they, They're never going to do the holiday special. But let's say <coughs> holiday special gets a release. You know, they gave it a special edition treatment. Like they updated the concerts, got new bands to play and everything. Yeah, I probably would as a joke. <coughs> as a joke, I probably would. I'd love to see the holiday ed- special edition get put out on Disney+. Plus. I think that'd be funny, too, when I watch it. Possibly. I haven't seen the holiday special in years. I mean years. Probably a decade. Um, I remember when me and my wife were married, I was still watching it every year, at least for two or three years in a row, and then stopped. I did probably three years in a row. Watch it with my little nephew. Watch it with uh, Dwayne, who's been on the podcast every once in a while because he doesn't live here anymore. But I watched it with Dwayne once because he wanted to know if it was really as bad as everyone said it was. And then I think I watched it on my own before that. <clears throat> so the reason, yeah, the reason I watched it that second year is because my nephew wanted to watch it. And I thought he would like it, but he hated it. He was a kid back then. He was like 12 or 10 or something. He hated it. And then uh, Dwayne the next year said, is it really that bad? I said, yeah, you want to watch it? So we did. And I said, I'm never torturing myself again. That may have been 2010, 11. I don't know. <clears throat> so it's been well over 10 years since I've watched that. Um, eventually, I will watch it again, probably do a big in-depth review on it because like, I'm going to if I'm going to be watching all the TV shows and doing reviews on those after I'm done with my rereads, then I'll definitely do that for um, you know the Ewok movies, uh, even the Clone Wars terrible movie, and uh, the holiday special. Why not, right? Why not? So I'd love to do those. Uh, <clears throat> other than that, there's really nothing that they could bring back. I mean, again, bring back the original trilogy. I don't even know why they bring back. They don't bring back more movies, more uh, these older movies, more often. They did in 2020 because they didn't have any other movies to show. And when they were showing old movies, that was a hate. I was like, wow. And I remember talking talking to someone at Cinemark, like calling headquarters on the phone, saying, "Is this something y'all intend to do forever? Because I love this." And they said, "Yes, sir. We always intend to bring it back." Yeah, but not to the extent where they had it back then. And <clears throat> they're not grabbing the good movies. There's a lot of stuff coming out there, and um, Heath, who's also been uh, on this show every once in a while, he goes to a lot of these too, but he and I don't have the same uh, um, taste in movies, and so he'll go to certain movies that I won't. Um, Probably the next movie we're going to go see together is Raiders of the Lost Ark. That is coming out here in June, around the 1st of June, like the 7th or something, and I'm definitely going to watch that. I can't. It already played years ago, back in 2020, and I missed it because that and Jurassic Park was playing, and I just did not get to the theater in time. <clears throat> but um, I'm not going to miss it again because, yes, I am going to watch Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Oh, I'm going to give it a shot. Do I think it's going to be good? No, I don't think it's going to be good. Do I think it'd be better than Crystal Skull? I hope so. But I plan on watching Raiders of the Lost Ark that first week. That second week, watch Temple of Dune. 
that third week in June, watch uh, Last Crusade. <clears throat> in the fourth week, right before Dial of Destiny comes out, I am going to watch the horrible uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which I think I've only seen once in theaters. I, if I bought it on DVD, I don't remember, and I don't. I know I haven't seen it since then. So I've only seen it once. <clears throat> and it has some neat scenes in it, but overall, it's not a good movie. It falls flat in the third act. Um, if, if, and much just a terrible character, a terrible character. Um, Shia LaBeouf did horrible. But uh, overall, I mean, I remember it had some charming moments to it. And that the Russians are the bad guys was all right. Marion coming back was fun too. But the swinging with the monkeys on the trees was atrocious. The horrible CGI ants were just terrible. Those are terrible scenes. Too much CGI everywhere. <clears throat> and then, of course, the whole thing about the Crystal Skull and Aliens was just too weird and just not good. Um, I don't know what Dial of Destiny is, but I wish they would have gone back. It seems like the best ones are when they deal with MacGuffins from the Bible, the Lost Ark, the Holy Grail. Surely there's some other, the Rod of Aaron. I don't know. I know there's some other, you know, biblical uh, relic that they can dig back up. Uh, the Ten Commandments, you know, the original Ten Commandments or whatnot or something like that. They can dig up and try to get or something. Because uh, those were the ones that have, you know, based based in historical artifacts, you know, those are the ones that sell out a little bit better. Even though I am a fan of Last Crusade, I did think it was the weakest of the trilogy, but I didn't say it sucked. Because as a kid, we were never allowed to watch Last Crusade. And so when we finally got to see it when we were older, we thought it was great. It was my favorite one for a while because it was forbidden. My mom and dad didn't want to see it because it's too violent. You know, it's kind of ridiculous now, but we thought it was really super cool. And the mine train scene, and the which we'd always heard about, the bridge scene, which we'd always seen pictures, but we never knew what it was about. Short round, he spoke to us as a character. He made us laugh as a kid. So all that type of stuff was just awesome. And for a short while, <clears throat> as a teenager, I would tell people Last Crusade, not Last Crusade, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Temple of Doom was the best one out of the trilogy. And then my brother was the first one to break ranks and go, nah, it was Raiders of the Lost Ark. I was like, no, we were maybe seniors getting close to be seniors in high school or early in college when he decided that, you know, Last Crusade, he may have been a little bit earlier, but but he he said, no, nah, Last Crusade was better. I was like, no, no, Temple of Doom's the best. It's the darkest of the three. three. And then when I sat down and watched all of them again, I was like, oh, yeah, it's Raiders. It's Raiders. Even though Last Crusade is really good. It's really good. Like, at, uh, when I watch these over again, I'm going to wonder if Last Crusade can tie Raiders of the Lost Ark. Because <clears throat> um, Raiders is a classic. I absolutely love it. But that Last Crusade is a solid movie. It's a solid movie through and through. And that was one movie. I never saw, I saw King of the Crystal Skull in theaters. I never saw any Indiana Jones movie in theater. The only one I almost saw was Last Crusade because for my birthday back in 89, my best friend was going to take me to go see it. Because he knew we were big Indiana Jones fans. And I was so excited. He and his parents were going to take me to go see this movie. Unfortunately, we were moving right after school was done. So when the school season ended, we moved to Louisiana. from Mississippi to Louisiana. And we had, and I moved. And so on my birthday, I was at my grandparents' house without any friends. I didn't have a birthday party. Yes, my grandmother bought me a new set of clothes. Because <clears throat> that's all grandmothers know how to do. Um, I don't think she bought me a toy. She just bought me a new pair of jeans, a new shirt, and a belt. I got to pick it all out. So, you know, she didn't pick it out. But that was my present for my 13th birthday. And I was bummed for two reasons. One, I didn't have uh, I didn't have just, uh, tickets to see The Last Crusade. And, uh, uh, of course, two, I didn't have to have a birthday party. My grandmother may have made a cake. I don't know. But I don't know. It, it was it was it was a disappointing birthday because I, I should have been seeing Last Crusade and my grandmother wasn't going to take us to the movie theaters either. So that was out of the question. I recently saw an article where uh, they were talking about why they don't bring back these Star Wars movies more often, you know, because they're definitely going to attract, you know, movie theater goers. And I, I say that for a lot of these older movies. I'd like to see more older movies in theaters, more common. It's not that common. And the ones they bring back, I don't really like as much. But um, I've seen a lot of uh, <coughs> remakes so far. I saw Groundhog's Day on Groundhog's Day. I finally got to see Big Lebowski. 
uh, in theaters, something I've always wanted to see. And then throughout the years, I've seen older movies come back, and I've always watched them. Sometimes they're movies I've seen before in theaters. A lot of times they're movies I never got to see in theaters in the first place, but always wanted to. And I know they do that a little bit here. I'm sure they do that other um, in bigger areas. I'm sure they have maybe a movie theater that shows more movies. You can get more movies out of that, and that'd be awesome. Because that's I get more excited over watching a returning movie, a theater return, a, a, a movie returning to theaters than I would a newer movie now. Because there's not much out there that I want to see. I mean, what, The Mission Impossible? But it's a part one. I hate it <clears throat> when they do part one and then part two the next year or whenever part two is coming out. Hopefully it comes out in the same year. But I'd like to see it. <clears throat> I'd like to see uh, Mission Impossible. And there's a very there's very few other little things I'd like to see in theaters. Um, I, can't, I can't remember when we did our top five most anticipated films of the year for Saturday Morning Santa Flange early in January. I've totally forgotten those movies now. I'm sure John Wick was number number one on it because I love John Wick movies. But to be honest, uh, it may be this year when I do at the end of the year and Saturday Morning Santa Flange, the other podcast that people don't know, <coughs> we go ahead and give our top five movies we saw in theaters that year. And already I'm going to tell you, it's probably going to involve a lot of these movies that are returning back to theaters. So, yeah, Return of the Jedi stands a good chance, as does Big Lebowski, as does Groundhog's Day. Because anytime I go back to see, I think Jaws was on my list last year, <clears throat> just because I really thought it was a good film. And this year, I mean, if I keep seeing more of them, who knows? Raiders of the Lost Ark could be back up there, because the rule is I have to have seen it in theaters. But I love seeing these older movies in theaters. And so, yeah, I don't, we don't get to poll the audience that much, because I keep forgetting to do that, but until the very end, right, when I'm tag tagging these. But since I have the time, let me know in the comments below. Let me know. What movies would you like to see return back in theaters? And what movies have you seen uh, that have come back to theaters that you've enjoyed? Did you enjoy it more or were you disappointed? You know, so far, I haven't seen a movie that I was disappointed in. Now, I'll be honest, when I when these re-releases come out, I know which movie I'm going to see. Like, I know the ones I'm going to love. And just seeing it on a big screen makes it all that more special. You know, my wife is all about the movie theater experience almost more than the movie shouldn't i mean the movie of course has to be somewhat interesting to her but she likes being in a movie theater she likes eating the popcorn and you know getting the movie snack you know or sneaking the snack in because we usually buy it somewhere else and sneak it in but she loves doing that she loves <coughs> you know just the being in the theater watching a movie with everyone big old bowl of popcorn and you know why we're going to do this uh, later on this week we're actually going to go to the movie theater. It's right around the corner. It's, it's literally a quarter mile distance from us, right down the road from us. So, uh, But we don't go see that many movies. But we are going to go see a movie, and she can't wait. Not because, I mean, she is interested in the movie that we're watching, but it's not the movie that's going to excite her. It's going to the movie theater. It's you know smelling the popcorn, eating the popcorn, having the drink, you know, doing whatever. That's what she enjoys more. <clears throat> for me, I don't even, we, we usually go on nights that no one goes. We never go opening weekend, especially when I want to see, like I wanted to see John Wick so bad, but we had to wait the next week after. And we went on like a Monday or we, we don't even go cheapskate Tuesday night <clears throat> because there's too many people there. And not because I'm scared of germs or whatnot. I just don't want, I just, I just like empty theaters and I like going to an empty theater now. And so I like to go on a Monday or a Wednesday or a Thursday. Like we're going on a Thursday because I know no one will be there. They'll be there for Friday, and I don't want to go. So I always have to wait till the weekend after or whatnot. If we're going to see it on a weekend, it's going to be like three or four weekends have passed. Like it's only got a few showings in theaters when it's showing on the weekends. That's when we'll go on a weekend. But usually weekday is my sweet spot, and that's when we're going to go see it. So <clears throat> for me, it's not about the movie experience at all. I mean, yes, I do like seeing it on the big screen. I think certain movies should be seen on the big screen, but... Uh, again, it's just, you know, basically the movie has to pull me in and very little like back in the day, you know, I think and a lot of people may have been like this, but it was like the movie of the week. Right. You know, what movie are you going to see this week in theaters? OK, what movie are you going to see next week in theaters? Now I'm like, what movie am I going to see in two more months? And it seems like every other month or once every three months I'm going to the theater. I barely saw five movies in theaters last year. Barely. That's less. I think I saw a total of six, maybe. So that was one every other month. And that's about on pace. Let me see how many I've seen here now. Two, three, four, five, six. No, I've seen 
five movies so far. So I'm not doing that bad. This will be my sixth movie. So I'm actually doing pretty good. One a month. <clears throat> Almost in a way. So that's really good. Those odds were not the same last year. But anyway, I'm done rambling. I'll see you next time with Bruce on Princes of the Universe.